so I'm at the, um, there's three pallets that are stacked and they're kind of sloping down a hill. And this is where I planted the, uh, the Alibaba watermelon that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make up for the, the lost time on the other one. And you can see the beans that I have growing with it are growing pretty well. And the watermelon's kind of reaching behind it. So the vine's doing good. And I predict that within a couple of days, we'll see something. Look at that. See the flower? There's a tiny little flower right there coming out. And there's a couple more coming out um, further along this stalk here. All right, so you all remember this uh, raised bed with the cinder block that we did. There's some ragweed growing in it over there. Um, now it's got um, a few crickets and stuff like that in there but for the most part between this uh, candyland tomato that I let just kind of grow crazy there's a little bit of bindweed growing on it but uh, it looks like it's broken off something ate it and uh, yeah the the peas that we planted these are crowder peas some people call them um, cow peas they are doing just awesome in here even with a few bug bites on them they're still producing producing like crazy they're you know getting that purplish uh tint on them i wish this phone would make it look a little prettier but um when they turn a little brownish that's when they're dry enough to pick um some people like to eat them when they're still soft which you know it's up to you but look at the other candyland tomato that's in this little bucket here that grasshopper he just got beat up by the fly swatter These uh, tomatoes are actually about marble size or a little bit smaller. There's a weed growing up in them. But the weed's actually holding them up because I don't have a stake or anything in here because they're actually indeterminates. Look at that. They're way over there. They're into the catnip bed. They're, they're way over into the catnip bed. And these here that um, are inside this raised bed, they're just sprawling all to the the left side and they're going down that bed so I'm going to stagger fall planting if you remember seeing the video of us putting this uh, the green plastic and all that down and we planted Siberian tomatoes and some Swiss chard the Swiss chard is already sticking out most of it's already come up in a line um, I'll take some of the healthier ones and, and I'll pull the, the thinner ones out so that we can make some healthy Swiss chard. But look, these are Siberian tomatoes. Look at them. They've already come up and they've only been in the ground for a few days. All they needed was that rain. So I've got Siberian tomatoes in that palette and that palette. And these are tomatoes that can live um, in up to, what is it, I think 30... 638 degrees so i had yellow pear tomatoes um last year which i'll try to find a, a picture of them to show you what they look like in the winter but i've got some that are growing now in these containers here and they're already producing but they also can can tolerate some cold temperatures without being covered up um the ones last year tolerated two frost before they finally started biting the dust and then we go to these tomatoes, which we just chopped a few weeds back. You can see Ed over there is hand uh, chopping. Ed, what do you call that blade? Amazing. <laughs> I don't know what that thing is called. But anyway, he's chopping off the weeds that were in the corn. You know, that's where the corn patch used to be. You can actually see my... Um, uh, sugar and snap peas which are another part of our our fall garden coming up behind ed in that uh dark brownish soil back there in that bed uh yeah do that Ed's actually um really close to those mexican sunflowers that have just whoo they're taking off they're so pretty orange um some of the um zinnias you can't really see anymore they're purple and they're starting to fade off their blooms but this guy's taking over see all these uh the brandy wines 
Now, if you notice, there are stakes and no wires, no strings, no ropes. Well, there's some rope down there that hadn't fallen. But during the last two rains, these things just toppled over and they knocked the stems out. And look at that. There's a jumping spider in that web there. I don't want to get close. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, these brandy wines, in spite of having a few... Um, grasshoppers eat them and you know stuff like that and a few weeds going through there they are actually doing good and this tomato this tomato was a uh, what you call a big boy and early when we first got it um, it bit the dust I mean you can see this uh, better boy hybrid that no longer exists down there in that um, heel and then we put a big boy in a, a bucket. Now there are um, some weeds growing in the dirt now, but it's just amazing that this thing did not want to die. It has taken off again. It had some kind of weird uh, mildew and it was not doing well at all. And it looked like it had bit the dust. And these tomatoes, I mean, they're tough. Tomatoes are tough. I mean, look at all of these. They've turned red since the um, the rain. Since we're over here, we'll look at the gourds. The gourds are actually um, starting, some of them anyway, are starting to dry. Oh, look, there's a, a tree frog. Can you see him? He looked like one of the, the leaves. I almost missed him. And there's a grasshopper sneaking over. Can you see him? He's actually eating my stuff on that side. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. Now I've got some uh, Romas here in this pink bucket. Um, I think they're Romas. They might be something else. They're so small. I don't remember. Maybe my Romas are somewhere else. They look like tiny Romas though. Oh, I know what they are. They're those dollar store, what they call Garden Delight tomatoes. That's what they are. Yeah, I hadn't grown them before. But anyway, so dollar store Garden Delight tomatoes. And I want to show you the difference in how full they are. And these Arkansas travelers, some of them have rotted out here because we hadn't come out during the rain to harvest them. And these vines are so lush and so big and so full because I found a uh, praying mantis on them. And I guess it, she's been taking care of them. But you can tell the difference between how full and lush these are where she's been eating all the caterpillars and bugs on them. And then you go down here, go down here and look. Look how scraggedy and scrawny those are that are at the very end. You know why that is? It's because the caterpillars are down there and there's only one praying mantis. And she's sticking somewhere in here and I mean I could look for her and try to find her but I honestly don't want to and you can see that these um, have also kind of fallen over and you know they've some of them have fallen off the the trellis and I need to put them back up just haven't gotten around to it yet because there's so much to do there's so much going on while we're talking tomatoes, this green giant tomato in the bucket, um, it's been attacked several times by grasshoppers and caterpillars and it's still going. It's actually finally gotten its flowers and I'm hoping to see some nice pretty green tomatoes on it. Last year we grew something um, that was similar to the green giant and they were really sweet and green and they fooled the bugs into thinking they weren't ripe. Look at Ed. We're men. We're men in tights. <laughs> Here where this corn was, um, we're going to close in all of this um, with cardboard and newspaper for the next season. And um, so when the corn comes back for the next season, then um, it's going to be all no-till. Um, and we're going to try to make sure that everything that we put there 
um, doesn't produce weeds. Since we're looking at this bed, um, these are the sugar and snap peas. And you can see most of them are in a row. Um, the rain kind of moved some of the seeds around. But there's also a few greens and beans thrown in here. Um, a couple people have asked about Sunflower Row, and we had left most of the sunflowers to dry, and most of them have, and we've taken a bunch. But there's still grasshoppers, and I mean, there's some jumping spiders on there now, but um, yeah, some of the seeds, they're just not, they're still not dry. It keeps raining, and the seeds aren't drying. Um, look at that. Look what he's eating. Um, the grasshoppers don't want the seeds. They want the, the hairy part of the stem and the new flowers that are coming out on the sides. That's what they want. All right, so since we're talking tomatoes, and if you wondered uh, where the bush goliath went, look at all those little weeds coming up in the dirt now. But anyway, this bush goliath won't die. <laughs> he will not die. He's actually doing better now. Um, after the rain and the caterpillars and the bugs than he was when we got him. I mean, we've only gotten like three tomatoes off him and he got sick that first round. And we've been doing our due diligence and spraying our, you know, mix of tea tree oil and neem oil and, and it's finally coming around. The black brandy wines, they, they have not turned, none of them have turned black. They, they're all they stay red and it makes me wonder if I've still got them too close to some of the other tomatoes. They just will not turn black. <laughs> they won't turn black. They're, they're staying red or that, that peachish color. All right, so some of you um, are wondering what happened to the yellow bales, our belly acre bales. They are still here. They're still producing, um, I don't know, medium-sized yellow bell peppers. Some of them are actually a lot smaller before they're turning. And I don't know if it's the amount of rain we've been getting. Whatever it is, they've started producing like crazy. We were getting one or two at a time, and now they're just everywhere. They are everywhere. All right, these are Super Sweet 100s attacked four times by hornworms and no matter how many times you spray organic stuff if it rains you got to spray it again <laughs> and sometimes we miss spraying because we can't come out here all the time in the rain but these little things have held on and they're still producing too they don't make good sauce but they make really good snacking tomatoes and if you dehydrate them you don't have to cut them in half you can just dehydrate the whole thing these are yellow pears that um, every time they grow flowers, the grasshoppers are eating them. We've got some corbachi peppers that are growing again next to them. The bugs seem to be focused more on the tomatoes, so they're actually leaving the peppers alone. And then, of course, you see weeds growing up through the, um, whatchamacallit. I'm going to finish filling this in with dirt so that um, snakes and critters don't move in. There are some containers that need to be emptied of water before the horse flies decide it, they're ready to make some horse fly babies. Over here, I've got um, another better boy that was not doing too well and now is, and it's producing again. You can tell all the spots that the caterpillars kind of got him. Um, before something got the caterpillars because they're kind of raw on the stem. Now here are some romas that I planted um, in this uh, container here and they're all cracked because it's just oh look at that there's a hornworm right there on it. You can tell that there's a worm on there somewhere but I just found him. I wish I found him with wasps all over him but I don't. You see him? Look at him. He's actually got his stripes. He's so big he's got his stripes. Ed's about to make him morph into two. Look at that poop right there. You see him? He's got stripes now. He's oozing. He's 
Uzi. Is there another one on there? It looks like, I mean, if there were two, there'd probably be no tomato left. So there's probably not two on there. That's crazy, Ed. And there is our Arkansas traveler that has taken over two cages. All right, these are all Cherokee purples. And for the most part, they're alive. They're just not doing that good. They are just, ugh. They're not doing that good at all. They are not built for this temperature, climate. They're, they're not built for this. Okay, so the other day, you remember I told you how shocked I was to find that there was um, a yellow pear tomato that had fallen out of the container we had planted it in and kind of grew all on its own on the side here. And it was like in three or four different stalks. Well, now that one little seed that I planted but fell out of its container is just all over the place in the pathway. And, you know, I don't even know where to begin to pick him up. So I'm just going to leave him there. And we'll see how long he, he grows for us. Um, I see something weird. He's got, a uh, oh, he's got those air roots sticking out down there. It looked like a caterpillar leg at first, but it's... It's air roots. And then this better bush um, hybrid here, if you can see them. And I've got um, some greens in there because I was trying to attract the bugs away from the tomato. It looks like it might be working. He was sick too uh, when it first started. And he's doing phenomenal now. I call him a he. And then our patio tomato um, was attacked a few times by caterpillars. Um, and he's doing okay. Um, the bugs keep grabbing his flowers before he can produce anything. So there's only a few tomatoes on it and they're not turning, um, uh, color at all. They're not changing color. Um, and I don't know now if it's just, you know, not enough sun or whatever, but I'm going to leave them out here and let them do what they do. See you little moth. I see you. And last but not least, um, here are the Russian cream tomatoes um, that are growing up this arch trellis, and they're growing up. They're um, a little bit larger than marble size, a little smaller than what you call a typical cherry tomato, but uh, they grow brownish, really dark brownish color. Sometimes they turn black. Look how molded they are. They're getting moldy in there. Um, the rain isn't very good for them um, when you're not collecting them. You can also see that there's bindweed growing up the trellis. Look at that. See it up there? So, so the reason I wanted to show you all all the different types of tomatoes that are out here is because we've got tomatoes from just about every climate in the world and we're trying to see what's going to grow because you, you never know. Um, the Siberian tomatoes that I just planted in the palace, they're kind of new to us. Um, we've grown tomatoes in, you know, cold temperatures, but we've never grown tomatoes that were designed for cold temperatures before. So that's going to be really fun for us to, to, you know, see, experiment a little bit and see what we can get to keep producing throughout the winter. Um, Remember this uh, greenhouse that we got from somebody. Um, it's actually going to be put into use, but hopefully I can get a, a high tunnel out here too um, so that we can move some things into that and be able to save them for next season. Anyway, I'm really glad that you guys joined us today. Hey, Ann, come this way. Oh, are you on Yeah, I'm turned around. <laughs> You're over there. All right. Hey, so, you people who've been asking about Ed, Ed's fine. So, I'm still here. I might be going to work here in just a few minutes. I guess got a call. We got 40,000 pounds of burritos turned over out on the interstate. So, y'all hungry? Anybody want some burritos? <laughs> All right. So, that's going to wrap us up there. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Hey, I have an, um, a question. Do you guys know of any kind of, like, cold weather corn? I would love to try some. Just tell me what it is and I'll find it. Thanks a lot.